guys and welcome. Dory and friends are here. I have Sharon and Michelle with me today and the rest of the team behind the scenes here. We are live on Facebook, Instagram, we are on Zoom, and we are all gathered here with Catherine, our producer, and David, and we are here to discuss part two of Medical Aesthetic Success, and we are on chapter four today. So today is all about positioning and marketing. Chapter four is a very important chapter in this book because it truly will totally differentiate you from everybody else and it makes you be the only choice in your community for what you offer. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Now if you don't have your copy of a book already, you can go to medicalaestheticsuccess.com and get a complimentary copy. You can also go on Audible and get an audiobook in case you're one of these people that don't have time to sit down and read. And you can buy it also on Amazon and other platforms. So no matter what, you really need to have this book in your hands. Now, of course, all these book gatherings are being posted on YouTube. So if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you can get notified of all the great content we put out on a monthly basis. So I'm so glad you're with us today. Welcome you have questions, please submit them in the chat. We are here to have a conversation about positioning and how we can help you improve your positioning and your business's positioning. So send those questions in so we can help you. So I wanna start by reminding everybody how easy um, everything is these days with your cell phone. We're all attached to this. When was the last time you left home without your phone. Does it happen? And if it does happen, you probably turn yeah. around <laughs> and go back to get your phone. It's like it's an attachment to us. And when people are searching, when consumers are searching for Botox, fillers, laser hair removal, bioidentical hormones, weight loss, whatever, they are literally one click away from clicking on you. So they go on Google or Bing or whatever, and they search places for Botox. And you know how many websites show up <laughs> for that? Literally millions of websites. Mm -hmm. And what do they do? They start clicking one after another, after another, after another. So the question here is how do you differentiate your website from everybody else's? And how do you make it clear for consumers to choose you? How do you position yourself as the only choice? I want you to write that down because really that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about making it easy for you to be the only choice. So no matter that there are hundreds of other med spas in your community, you're gonna make it so good that they're gonna choose you. Wouldn't that be a dream? Oh, absolutely. Like, wouldn't that be amazing that you are just the only choice? So my question to you is this, are you the only choice now? So if we go to your website, if we read your blog, or if you have one, if we learn about what you do, how do you differentiate yourself from the competition now so they are choosing you? Ask yourself that question tonight with a glass of wine and have a true moment of truth. And be honest, be honest. Are people coming to your website and leaving because you have not made it clear what your positioning is all about? Or are they staying? Well, Dora, you have a key point there that it starts actually, the position starts with presence, right? Yes. So, as Dory said, you have to be present because people are scrolling mm -hmm. and you need to make sure that you have consistent presence, constant presence, mm -hmm. and, and make sure that you are, as this chapter highlights, different mm -hmm. as well. Because when you're going through, and it's like dating apps, right? It, you're looking for something. <laughs> you're looking for you're something. to the right or to different. the left. <laughs> swipe, swipe, swipe. But you want to be You're a married present. girl. How would you know about swiping? Oh, you know, we all played. <laughs> we had our time. We had our time. 
but are you present and then do you have the right position and yep. as you're having that glass of wine <laughs> after the dating app piece then where's my sure glass of wine <laughs> What, what the heck is this? Well, I don't want coffee. Might, I don't want have, coffee now. There might be other things. There might there. be other. Is there wine in there? <laughs> <laughs> it's those key, three key points that she just made too, Dory, that's going to help them stand out from all of those other websites because all the other websites have the same pictures. They have the same fonts. They have the same colors. Mm -hmm. But if you're doing those three points. The same stock image. Exa you mean. <laughs> yeah, the same stock yes. image. Yes. We see it over and over, and there's nothing exciting about that. So if yeah. you're following those three points right there yep. you're setting yourself above what everybody else is doing yes for sure and, and dory started it off with a great quote from zig ziglar around trust trust is built with consistency mm -hmm. right when you see someone often and they are explaining their story their why mm -hmm. and they're showing up you build trust yeah. so it's really important yeah actually it's a very good quote you should read it so if people like you if people like you uh, they will listen to you, but if they trust you, they'll do business with you. This is one of my favorite sales trainers, Zig Ziglar, late Zig Ziglar, I should say. But when I was a younger person, oh my God, I studied Zig Ziglar like crazy. He was one of my favorite salesmen on the planet. He yeah. was so good. But yeah, it's all about building relationships and building trust for sure. And they're so quick with that finger. So if you don't grab their attention right away, they're gone. So anyway, let's dig in. Are you ready to dig in? Submit your questions so we can help you out. So let's start with uh, differentiation, how important that is. And if you, again, compare yourself to others, what is so obvious that makes you look different? So what would you say that is? I would love to hear some comments, put some comments in there. What do you think differentiates you from the competition? What, what do you think people would say? I think for me, what would it differentiate? I would say um, doing, doing the blogs, um, having the presence on there, um, making myself the expert at what I do, and letting other people know that I am the expert and the best of them. So the more that I have that presence that you were talking about with whether it's webinars or a book writing or um, doing blogs, that's going to help other people see me in the same light that I believe in right. myself. Right, that's as. you. That's because you've been around our community for a while. That was a good answer. That, well, that's not what I was no, asking. Okay. Okay. We've read that's not what I was asking. I was asking, what do you think? Sorry, I read the book. What do you think other people that are watching us would say what differentiates them? because they don't know these answers, and nor would they give these answers, actually. So what, what Michelle is talking about is absolutely right. Those are major differentiators. Mm -hmm. But do you have those things there? I would love to hear from some people. So if you're with us live, please tell us, what do you think is a big differentiator between you and your competition? What would you say that is? Do we have any comments? Actually, we have someone right now asking what services does inspiration management offer to help them with differentiation? Oh, that's a good question. Wow. Uh, well, we have all kinds of things. <laughs> we teach marketing. We are marketing experts. So we teach you how to come up with differentiators. And one of the biggest differentiators is becoming a published author. So we do have a Become Published uh, seminar coming up this year where we actually help you become a published author. So let's talk about just that one strategy, you guys. I remember when I wrote my first book, this is my fourth. When I wrote my first book, our business literally went on steroids. It was crazy because most consultants don't have books. So look at all the medical spas near you, medical aesthetics, whatever. They're all doctors, nurse practitioners, but how many of them are published authors? Absolutely. Not many. So let's go back to the website example. Let's say I'm searching and I find one med spa after another after another, but then I come across one that wrote a book about medical aesthetics for consumers, not medical aesthetics business, for consumers. Do you think that's going to be a major differentiator now? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Am I going to click and receive that book or am I going to have a different impression now? I'm like, oh my gosh, 
Michelle is a published author. She wrote a book about medical aesthetics, Botox, fillers, lasers. She must know what the heck she's talking about. So yes, I'm going to call that place. So those are the things that we help you implement to help you differentiate yourself. And writing a book, becoming a published author, or blogs like she just mentioned, or uh, articles, or videos, <laughs> those are all things that will help position you as the expert and totally differentiate you from others. Great question. So hopefully you'll come to our next book writing seminar. Go to becomepublished.com yeah. and check it out. I look forward to seeing you. Yeah, it'd be nice. We need to get, get you ladies all published. <laughs> so, uh, but before we get into that, um, I really want to tell you the first part in the book, I talk about telling your story. And there's nothing worse, like when we do a website assessment with people, you go to the about section and it is the most lame page on the website. Like there's nothing on there. There's not even a picture of the doctor. Mm. There's not a picture of the team often. Yeah, we've seen a lot. Uh, and it, they talk about things like they don't even have a name. I went to, literally, I went to someone's website the other day and went to the about section. I couldn't even find the person's name. Like, who are you? Because as you know, people like to do business with people, not with this, <laughs> whoever you are. So telling your story is very important. So I came across this book a while ago. It's called uh, Building a Story Brand. So if you don't have this book, you really should get it because telling your story and telling people why you are doing what you are doing is huge. Like you could have any career on the planet. Why are you doing this? You need to tell people that. You need to share your purpose and your passion and make sure that you tell your story. Because if you don't, who's going to? Yes. And if you think about it, right, if, if you're looking at two different locations to go to and one has the same services as the other, mm -hmm. but you have a story about why you got into the business, how you have a passion for building confidence mm -hmm. in women because as a child you were bullied or whatnot and that really made the difference and gave you your first breakthrough. Wouldn't you choose, if you're choosing between one or the other, the, the, the place that has mm -hmm. the people that are like you, mm -hmm. the people that you want to be like, that you want to be around, mm -hmm. and that you want to contribute as you're investing in your own beauty? Yeah. I think when people are swiping and looking, too, they're looking to make that connection that you were just talking about because I, I, in today's day, that's one of the first things. They want to feel that they've made a connection. They want to feel like when they walk into your office and get the treatments that you're offering, mm -hmm. that they're the most important person in your office at that time. And that all starts with that first click where they saw, oh, this person really gets everyday people and understands why we need to have this, this, or this done. And then they're going to call and make that appointment before they're going to go on to the next and see absolutely nothing except services and prices. Mm -hmm. And we have members, right? So the members that have a story, mm -hmm. like is Dr. Moyes, right? Mm -hmm. He appeals to his audience so well because when he talks about it to even us, he's talking about my people. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that my people feel welcome. <laughs> and it, it resonates and they come in, right, yeah. constantly. <laughs> Yeah, so you guys are our people, <laughs> and we want to help you, truly. So I want you to go to your um, website. I'm talking about the website because people are more likely to find you online first before they find you anywhere else. So your online presence is really key, and not just your website, but also your social media, your YouTube channel, if you're doing videos, your Facebook, Instagram, all those are so important because, again, people are forming that impression and it's going to be a difference between do I go see you or do I go see her. Yeah, It's not rocket science. Well, for some, it might seem like rocket science, <laughs> though, Dory. So it, could you break down? So I have a question around people can't tell what is a good story, like sh should I tell my childhood story or... What is relevant that's actually mm -hmm. going to build my expert position? Actually, that's a great question because that's a mistake people make all the time. They start from when they were a kid <laughs> and then work back. Yeah. 
well, when I come to your website, I don't want to start with when you were five. I want to start with where you are now, why you're doing what you're doing, and then if you want to go back in time, go back in time. That's really the best way to do it. And when you're writing a story, sometimes it's better to have somebody else write it about you. So instead of saying, I, 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 it should be told about you. So other people can speak highly of you a lot better than us speaking highly of ourselves. We don't want that. So we want people to give us quotes on how great you are, the expert that you are, having testimonials within your story even. It, it all works. It all works. Right. So I would start with the present, why you're doing what you're doing right now, the benefit your consumers gain, why should they come to you, why are you the only choice, and then go back in time if you want to go back in history. But it should be told for sure. And if you could do it with a video even, like an interview style like this, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's really the best way to do an About Us page, like me sitting here and interviewing you. So you should come to the Meet the Experts show, by the way. If you have, you need to go to meettheexperts.com and I would love to interview you or somebody, you come to our studio and we literally interview you, then you can take that video and put it on your story. So there you That's go. It's fun. It's fun to be on yeah. the stage. So for I'm sure. Enjoying it. Yeah, so that, that works. That's a great question. What else? Do we have other questions? Well, so I, I do want to point out when we talk about the expert positioning and why you should also be interviewed on your About page is because you pointed out in basically the first page, and I think it's missed if you're not paying attention, but that your position is determined not by you and what you wish for, right, mm -hmm. but by others. Mm -hmm. So can you go into detail about, okay, how, how, how can we be aware of what others think of us and so we are building that expertise? Yeah, well, I think other people can speak highly of you. Uh, and that's one thing we've practiced for many years. Like if you go to our YouTube channel, you will literally see over 100 video testimonials of people so like if my team is having a success planning session and talking to someone and they're on the fence whether they should join or not, it's like, you don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to choose me because I'm the best injector. You don't have to choose me because I'm telling you I'm the best of this and that. You should choose me because of what our clients are saying. So go to our YouTube channel, watch the videos, go to our website, go to the Botox page, see all the before and after pictures, see the testimonials, see the video testimonials. That's why we're always telling people get video testimonials. And when you do that, then others are complimenting you. Mm -hmm. And there is a huge difference between the two. Sure, so, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What kind of questions should they ask? Yeah, them? that's a great question. Thank you, Danny. So I think I would start, and literally we actually have that in one of our modules, uh, the marketing modules that our members have access to on Metspa Biz University. Uh, I would want to start by them, you know, what concern did you have that made you reach out to us? So they need to be standing there saying, you know what, I was losing elasticity, I had fine lines and wrinkles, I went searching on my phone and I wanted a solution and I chose you. And boy, am I glad I chose you because now after I had Botox fillers, this and that, this is what I look like and I am super happy with the results. I am so glad I chose Sharon's Med Spa to go to. So if you too are looking for ways to enhance your appearance, make sure you call up Sharon and have her help you. So that's what a testimonial should actually offer. So you should have that for every page on your website. So if your guest consultation person is doing a consultation and the person is saying, oh, I have to think about threads. Then you can just pull up your threads page and say, you know what? Sharon felt the same way. And here's what she did. Let's listen to this video. 
And then Sharon is on the video saying, you know what? I was losing elasticity. I was concerned. I did not want to go have plastic surgery. So I chose the PDO threat treatment. And boy, am I glad I did. I hesitated. I was scared, but I did it. And I'm so glad I did. It was the best investment I made in myself. Now, if somebody's on the borderline, whether they want to get threads or not, do you think after the, watching that video and seeing the testimonial below it, they're going to sign up? Absolutely. Absolutely. And those are differentiators. Yeah. But how so, many websites do we know, unless they're members, how many websites do we assess and see that have that? None. Zero. Yeah. None. Yeah. None. <laughs> none. So you guys are so blessed to be with us today, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> How effective do you think the before and after pictures are for websites and social media? Uh, the way they're done right now, they're stupid. Mm -hmm. They're like this big. So would you use them as part of your position? Of course, but I'm telling you what's wrong with them. Okay. <laughs> right now, you go to see before and after pictures, they have gallery. And they're all on one page. And they're all this big. It's like, what the, what the hell is that? So instead... Before and after pictures should be nice and big, mm -hmm. should be able to see, and they should be on each page that, that pertains to that particular treatment. Okay. And don't do the after picture immediately after you just inject, injected the, you know, what out of me. You want to do it where they can come back, they look good with makeup, and then you take my after picture. That is a before and after picture. That's a differentiator. So you could do the same thing. Meet Sharon, uh, let's say on the fillers page or whatever. Uh, she wanted to have, she wanted to enhance her features, look younger, fresher. She experienced fillers. This is what she looked like before. These are the fillers we used. And here's what she had to say after the treatment. It's so powerful, so powerful, yet most people do the same thing. They all copy each other. They all have the same websites. They all have the same pictures, like Michelle was saying. It's ridiculous. Do a photo shoot. Have your own pictures in the place. Or I was just looking at a website. We were just talking with someone, went to their website. They have empty furniture. Like, what the heck? We're not selling chairs. We're not selling furniture. They have the front desk. Oh, what a beautiful desk. I want to come and see you just because you have a nice desk. Just very stupid. So it's only powerful if you're using it in the right way. It's powerful if you're using it in the right way. And it's powerful to show your place with people in it. Don't show me your front desk without your guest relations person. Don't show me an injectable room without a client and you standing there and holding their face. Don't do that. You're missing out. That's not differentiation. That's the same as everybody else. Don't want to do that. So, Dory, what are some master tips on that? You know, you said you wrote here that it's, takes the first impression and people are swiping. So what are some best strategies for that quick differentiation? Yeah. So I'll tell you what they should not do first because this drives me crazy. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. So I go to a website and right away there's a pop-up box. Receive 10% off. It's like, I have not even looked at your homepage yet. Do you think I'm gonna opt in? Rolexes? Do you think I'm gonna opt in to a 10% pop-up before I even saw anything on your site. That is the stupidest thing I have ever seen. It is really stupid. <laughs> it's good to do a pop-up box, but you want to do the pop-up box as I'm exiting, not as I'm entering. That's like going on a date and, <laughs> and expect to get kisses right away before you even bought me one glass of wine. <laughs> That's just plain stupid. <laughs> so you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Instead, you need to have a welcome video. 
place for them to see, make a great first impression. You can make a first visit offer on the page, not a pop-up. So anything that you want to show me that you are different, Love that's it. what they should be doing. <laughs> we laugh here all the time, not at you, at your marketing companies. <laughs> your marketing companies that you hire don't know what to do. <laughs> well, and it goes back to that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, you've been known to help coach the marketing yes. companies to try to help our Yes, clients. sadly, sadly, we have uh, members that hire marketing companies, and they're really uh, stopping us from helping them grow because of their bad efforts. So literally, I've gotten on Zoom meetings with their marketing companies to help them market for our members. It's pretty sad. Well, what advice would you give our members that are using marketing companies um, and maybe aren't feeling yeah. like they're getting what? What? How? So would we they just it? did the Leap Ahead seminar, and I'm always. I mean, there are some good marketing companies. Don't take me wrong. Uh, we've just actually partnered up with one to help our members because I was so fed up in wasting my time coaching other marketing companies. So. It's very important to really interview them, make sure that you're hiring the right people, make sure that you're getting your reports, you're getting results, you're generating leads. But if you don't, then you really need to look elsewhere. But at the leap ahead, I was encouraging everybody to have uh, an internal marketing person. As a matter of fact, we were just on the call with someone. So they have a marketing person and they just hired another marketing company because their marketing person doesn't know how to do it because they were not members of ours yet, uh, high achievers. So you can go to the marketing modules on Metzpabiz University and study how to do marketing. Obviously, they didn't learn it. <laughs> well, and it's, I think, Dory, it's why people should come to the book writing seminar because Sometimes you get a bunch of ingredients and you think you have a recipe, mm -hmm. but as you've broken down, there are key strategies that you've seen don't work every single time and yeah. the ones that do, and it's sequential and it's alchemic and it all, it, it's not enough to just know the pieces, right? You have to put it all together. Well, yeah. Let yeah. me tell you a little short, real quick story. I met Dory um, about a year ago at her Millionaire Circle, which we have coming up in June. Um, and at that seminar, it completely made me do a 100% turnaround in the way I looked at marketing. Before I went to your seminar, Dory, marketing was those stock pictures, and it was just doing a standard Facebook ad, and it was just having a, a website. After the seminar, I realized not, it's not at all about that, but it's more about that, making that connection, making it more personal, mm -hmm. and reaching people to at a different level. It's not just... A, you know, look at and move on, it's reaching people so that they want to stay and look at what you have to offer and learn. It's mm -hmm. connecting. Yeah. And so I recommend the Millionaire Circle. Basically, it changed everything that I've done in the past 40 years in the mm -hmm. way that I look at it because of that, yeah. that experience. Mm -hmm. so. And well, most people think marketing is like go doing discounts and promotions yes. and price war games, and, and it's so far away from that. Yeah, 100% changed every aspect of the way that I had approached marketing, mm -hmm. and, and it changed. Yeah. I mean, we went, the, the numbers changed I, dramatically, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it does. It makes a big difference for sure. So the millionaire circle is all about attracting the affluent consumers. So instead of playing price discounting, so this is on page uh, 75, pricing and positioning. So you have an option. You have an option of where you want to position your business. So you have the Walmart, you have Target, you have Neiman Marcus or Saks. Same thing with your medical spa. Do you want to be a Walmart of the medical spas, a Target or a Neiman Marcus? That's positioning. And that's all determined by the type of experience that you offer and your pricing. So we, we were having a conversation earlier about being competitive. Do you think Neiman Marcus sits down in their board meetings and say, let's be price competitive with, tar with no. Target? Hell no. 
So why would you even think that? I just wanted to go across the Zoom meeting and just shake that person <laughs> up. I'm feisty today. I just want to like, get, get with it. Get smart. What do you mean you want to charge $225 for a Hydra facial? Who charges $225 for a Hydra facial? No. Are you kidding me? You want to be price competitive. I was actually surprised at the average price for that. I would have gone even higher. <clears throat> so, because yeah. I'm the best that, that's in that field. So, yeah. so you're, you're positioning. So there's two ways to do business, right? You can either do a lot of clients, be cheap, and make hardly any money, or see fewer clients, charge a lot higher, and make a lot of money. What do you want? Do you want to be cheap or do you want to be expensive? Well, the latter is also offering for the client themselves a better experience. Exactly. You know, they're going to have a better result. Well, that's a what I asked her. Better... I said, do you believe that you offer a better experience than everybody else mm -hmm. in your competition? She's like, yes. I'm like, well, why don't you want to charge higher for that experience then? It made perfect sense to me. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, and I think what she was stuck on, Dory, was, was that, well, we offer the same equipment, yeah. right? So you offer the same named <laughs> service. And there is, there is cachet to having a certain type of service like hydrofacial. However, as you started at the beginning of this talk, it is the person that they're yeah, partnering the with experience. and recommending, right? The whole experience. Right. It's not the equipment that they're buying. No. It's the experience. It's the person. It's yeah. your expertise. It's just like Starbucks getting away with charging $10 for a coffee. Mm. Like you can Plus go to three dollars for the oat milk upgrade. Yeah, you can go to <laughs> McDonald's and get a coffee. Still, how much is the McDonald's coffee? It's now two sixty. Dollar seventy nine or something like anymore. that. It's not anymore. It's two dollars. I have to yes, go so to McDonald's. I, yes, I know. So I two dollars something for McDonald's or ten dollars at Starbucks. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you think Starbucks sits down and does these conversations? They don't care. They mm -hmm. just charge what they want to charge. Yes, we have a question. So Dory, uh, a member is asking if I am new to injecting and my, and I'm new to business, can I still start with high prices? Well, if you're good, you need to get your skills down. It doesn't matter if you're new, you need to go and practice a lot. You need to practice a lot, you need to study, you need to bring up your self-confidence, you need to realize your true worth. And yeah, you can, why, why wouldn't you? If you're good, see, that's the thing is you can be expensive, but you have to deliver. Like we, we can be expensive, but we give you the best business model. So it's one thing to charge high and be good. And it's another, if you're starting out and not trained enough yet and try to charge high, but not do as good of a job. So you have to be careful. So I would just advise you to just Practice, 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 practice until you get so good. Study, 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 study. We just did a module yesterday about self-confidence. And self-confidence and earning your true worth is a direct reflection on your skills. So if you're skilled, you can charge whatever you want. Remember when Oprah was on TV? She used to travel to go get her eyebrows done and the person that did her eyebrows charged her like $700, and that was like 20 years ago we're talking. And she would fly to go get her eyebrows done by that person. That's because she was skilled. Yeah. That's so when, when you're skilled, and when you position yourself as the expert, and you've done your homework, and you've studied, and you trained, then yes, go for it, it doesn't matter. Talk about this a little bit at the last chapter with change and implementing and things and I, I think it kind of fits in here with positioning if you start yourself off positioned as Saks then how often do you want to relook at your positioning to make sure that you're maintaining it mm -hmm. and make sure that you're staying at the top level mm -hmm. and that absolutely well you should always be innovating and always implementing new things and keeping it exciting and that's going to help to keep our positioning uh, Absolutely. Up high. Well, it's just like every time you go into sex, they move things around. You never see the same thing. Even if it's the same stuff, they just move them. <laughs> right. And when we see time and time again where people fall into those yeah, things, you, and then you they gotta, don't you got to keep and... innovating, keep mm -hmm. changing things up because your clients get bored. 
And if they're bored, they're going to go get excited somewhere else. But you need to keep them excited. Yeah. That's a good segue into your content piece of how to yeah. keep innovating, creating content. Well, they should come up with that position statement that I have in here. I have some samples there for you. And then we talked about, oh, she caught something. Do you see what's wrong with this chapter? Have you guys realized what's wrong? If you call in and you tell me what's wrong with this chapter, there's an error. I'm going to give you a ticket to the millionaire circle for free. That's a $3,900 ticket for free to come to the seminar June 1st and 2nd. So can you tell me what's wrong with this chapter? So I want you to look in the book and tell me what's wrong. And literally, I'm going to give you one ticket for free. That's a good giveaway. That's a good giveaway, yeah. So really one person giveaway. getting it. So yeah. there you go. Just so you know, you the millionaire the circle is all about marketing to the affluent. You definitely want to come to this seminar. <laughs> all right, but I'm not going to tell you what's wrong with it. You have to figure it out for yourself. All right, so uh, are you talking about copywriting? Is that what you well, want me to go into? Well, I have the question of because... A oh, lot what's of people the struggle with content creation, right? So yes. part of how we want to be present online in this chapter is mm -hmm. online content creation. Mm -hmm. And some people struggle with that. So why is content so important to having that expert positioning? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's important for a couple of things. First, it's the positioning of the expert. But then second, Google loves content. Content is king. So if you don't write content and keep refreshing your website all the time, your website is going to be stale and you're not going to come up on searches. And that's a bad thing. So when you sit down to write content, the content has to be educational for consumers. So you're helping them identify solutions for their problems and you're showing them that you know what you're talking about. Huge. That's why we do a newsletter every month. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to tell you, though, a lot of our members now are doing newsletters. I'm so excited. Finally, I'm getting across. So doing a newsletter and then putting it on the website would be super important, too, for content. But, you know, everybody doesn't like to write. Not everybody can write. So um, there is a new cheat sheet opportunity now. <laughs> there is. So with artificial intelligence, um, I'm not going to tell you too much because we tell a lot of this stuff to members, So, but you can go and explore it. Uh, there are ways to write content right now that's super easy, and you can really come up with articles in no time at all. But you should have the structure, though, and that's what we go over in here, is the structure that you should write your content to where it's easy for consumers to basically digest it. So it would be important to go through these steps that I have in here on chapter, starting on chapter uh, 77 and on to go over how to create proper content. I think that would be a very important thing. And even writing an email, like we were doing a call uh, with one, one of our High Achiever members earlier today and um, she wanted to write an email blast to do a happy hour educational event. She wanted to do PDO thread talk to bring in clients to her place, uh, implementing one of the strategies that we call either lunch and learn or happy hour where you do a little talk and then you sell them on whatever that talk is. And she didn't know what to write. So we literally sat there and gave her the structure on how to write the email to inform her database of what this event is all about and to sign up and come watch the PDO thread talk so she can uh, recommend it to them and make a special offer and have them buy it. So events like this, you can generate forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in like a couple of hours. So follow the, this format, and you'll be able to write your content in a much more productive way. Well, and I have to say, I mean, your, this chapter has so much in it in a very simple format. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have invested, I won't say how much, but oh, tens of thousands of dollars 
in various marketing strategies mm -hmm. and you debunk the ones that don't work and you, as you said, have that simple structure mm -hmm. uh, that is the thread through all the other investments I've made, but it just works. It, yeah. so, simple, I yeah. love simple. When you it's start complicating, that's when you get in trouble. <laughs> simple is good. When creating content, how do you um, bump up the urgency to have your people convert? Yeah, great question. You have to have an offer. It's useless if you're trying to do, especially in marketing content, um, if you don't have an offer, then you're not gonna create urgency. So if you want them to take action now, like click here to purchase, or click here to do this, or click here to do that, you have to have a, an offer, and usually a limited time to be able to do it. That's the only way people are gonna take action. So, great question. Well, and along those lines, that's a great question. Um, what is the mix, would you say, Dory, on evergreen, the things that are always there versus, mm -hmm. you know, promotions? Yeah. Well, blogging would be more evergreen. So if you have a blog page on your website, what uh, Sharon means by evergreen, evergreen is content that never gets old. Like if you want to tell me about Botox, unless Botox formula change, that article would be good forever. And you don't want to put date dates in there. So don't say like this year in 2023, we are doing this and that. That's not evergreen. Evergreen is content without any dates that will last forever. So blogging would be a great place to do evergreen content because that could serve as educational content for you. And then videos, if you do videos, um, I like to do evergreen videos and then sometimes you wanna do limited time videos, depending on again, whether they're a sales tool that you want somebody to buy things right now, those are not gonna be evergreen or content that's informational, educational, uh, informative, yes, you can do evergreen content. Love it, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? We've been on already for 47 minutes. Mm. Wow. So I have a lot of great things in here, like she said, in, in a very short chapter. So, um, I would love for you to assess, like the shortcut to success section in here is all about uh, assessing your online presence. If you have tough skin and you want us to assess it because you're gonna get beat up, <laughs> we would love to assess your information and tell you what you need. Uh, you need to have a website that's working for you, so make sure you're capturing people's information on your website. Uh, brand yourself and, and your team as the experts, so assess that, see how really you're coming across. And then uh, read, read your content. I'm amazed, like what I read sometimes. I have to correct like so much of the content because of the way it's written. So go read it. Read it with brand new eyes, as if you did not write it. <laughs> you can be more critical that way. <laughs> have other people read it for you. Have other, other yeah. people look at. That's one thing we do here at Inspiration is we're always Circular. proofreading yeah. and reading. We we and just had we, we're helping somebody build a website right now. <laughs> this is a conversation that I had with Nakia this morning. So this is our office manager. So she calls me on my buzzer. She says, Dory, I'm having a problem. I'm like, what's the problem? She says, I have this client that we're doing a website for that's going to other people's websites, copying the content, putting it all in a document, and sending me a PDF document of all these treatments that she basically stole from other websites. And she wants us to use that. I'm like, we can't. That's like, that's illegal. You're going to get locked up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what people think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Write your own content. Don't be stealing other people's content. There's a word for that. <laughs> There's a word. <laughs> yes. So a question is, is more really more? If I offer more services and more products, does my positioning improve? Not necessarily. 
you could be known as an expert for one thing. Like I just did the meet the expert with Dr. Mendieta. He's only known for doing Brazilian butt lifts and they do a million dollars a month for doing one treatment. <laughs> so no, more is not more. Uh, sometimes less is more. So you don't need 10,000 things on your menu. Perfect the things, like we don't do consulting for every other industry. We only do business advising and consulting to the medical aesthetic industry. So we don't have more. So you need to really look at your target market. What are they looking for? You can have a nice, well-rounded menu, but it doesn't have to be everything under the sun. No. Good so I, question. I have another question. The, you ask in here for the readers to track their success mm -hmm. and understand We have how not talked about well. that. That's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. So how can they track and what is good success? Yeah. Uh, well, there are several things to track with success. Uh, and if you're looking at your business and these dif different business principles, so you have marketing, so you need to track marketing. You have sales, you have to track sales. You have operations, you have to track operations. You have profitability, you need to measure profitability. So if you break it down into these segments of what every business finances to, uh, and then you need to have these marks that you're wanting to reach. And if you have these benchmarks and you're measuring what you're doing now versus those benchmarks, you're gonna know whether you're succeeding or not. But the sad thing is, we're talking about marketing and positioning online and all that thing. What breaks my heart is seeing so many people paying thousands of dollars for marketing efforts and they don't even have their guest relations team asking, how did you hear about us? Mm -hmm. yep. Total, no, no measurements. And that's sad. But yeah, every aspect of your business, and I think we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in uh, future chapters, but you gotta measure. So if you have online, you wanna know how many people came to the website, how many of them opted in, how many of them became clients. Uh, you did a Facebook campaign, how many people actually went to that page? How many people converted? How much did you spend? All that should really be measurable. And if it's not, you're wasting your money. Yeah. Would you say it's it's at every step of the client journey or are there key steps or? I mean, at the end of the day, it's all gonna be measured with retention. And if your retention rate is high, that means you're doing pretty good overall. But if your retention rate stinks, then something is definitely wrong. So that usually is a total reflection on the experience. Love it, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We have one more. Yeah. Is there a tool on the MedSpot Biz University to teach me and my team how to properly take before and after pictures? We actually do. It's one of the modules in the marketing series. It's under Brewing Brilliance. And I give a whole example on how. And the other problem I see with before and after pictures usually it's not a stationary spot in your med spa. So I would recommend you have one central area to do all your before and after pictures. So the same spot, same lighting, same camera, same everything. So you have your before and then you have the after in the same environment. Those are the best before and after pictures. What about features and benefits story? That uh, I think this trips a lot of people up is, how do I know that I'm talking about the mm -hmm. benefits of mm -hmm. the treatments that I offer and mm -hmm. our spa experience? And Yeah, the, a good analogy for you to explain that is, let's say I wanna heat my coffee. Uh, I don't need to know how the microwave works. That's a feature. All I wanna know is that I can heat my coffee. That's the benefit. So I put this cup in the microwave, I'm gonna have hot coffee. I don't care how this laser works. I don't care what's inside that cream or whatever. As long as you tell me what is in it for me, what is the benefit for me, that's what sells. 
because consumers are going to sit there, especially if they're driver personality. Mm -hmm. It's like, tell me why I need this. Tell me how it works and how it's going to help me look better. And if you just keep it simple like that, you don't have to get into a lot of details. And that's where people sometimes get stuck, especially clinical people, mm -hmm. like an injector or, a, or an esthetician. I has actually asked an esthetician the other day, I said, why do I need to have this treatment? Why, why, tell me why I shouldn't have the Morpheus. And she went on telling me all this stuff. I'm like, no, I just want to know why I should have this treatment. What's it going to do for me? That's a benefit. So don't get caught up in features. Just tell your consumers the benefits that they will gain. Well, and just to close out our day, it's just like we started the day. What you said to us was problem and benefit, right? So the benefit or problem and solution. solution. Mm -hmm. So the solution is the benefit, right? Mm -hmm. Because what you wanted from the Morpheus was what is your problem? It's going to fix your that's, problem. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's all about problem and solutions for sure. Love it. All right, you guys, so uh, chapter five is going to be, again, a little bit more about positioning and marketing because we're in part two now, and it's about uh, how to gain celebrity status and differentiate your business with video marketing. So I like to think about myself as the video queen. <laughs> We've got a few lined up tomorrow already. We have <laughs> hundreds of videos on our YouTube channels. I have been doing videos before videos were popular. And I love video marketing. So if you're not doing video marketing, you need to definitely read this chapter or listen to it. And I want to encourage you to start doing videos because you really will become a celebrity. I did it. I would walk at conferences and people would say, oh, she's the YouTube video lady. That's Dory. <laughs> and that's what people will do. So that's what we're going to talk about next in two weeks so make sure you go to youtube subscribe make sure you go check out the millionaire circle and the become published and if you have more questions feel free to submit them this was a great session thank you for joining me it was fun thanks team thank you all for joining us god bless and until next time stay inspired bye now <laughs>